guess what? I'm excited. We have a special guest speaker this morning that's going to come and share the Word of God with us. Are your hearts open this morning? Yep. You want to hear from God? I believe God's got something to say to us. So let's put our hand together and uh, welcome up. I'm trying to make eye contact, but I can't see it. Where? Sue! Thanks, Al. And yes, I'm as surprised as you are to see me up here today. This is not something I ever thought I'd do. But I just want to say I've had so much support from my family. I've got some of my family here today and, and my church family, my neighbours. Um, and I'm so appreciative. Now, I really like to hear other people's stories. I guess you call it their faith journey. Um, so I've included my story a bit later on. Actually, it's not too much later on. This is not a, a super long message. And although I do talk about myself uh, a little bit more than I normally would, I know that this, me being here today, it's not about me. But I've had such a hard time getting that thought out of my head. Uh, I, just, I just couldn't help thinking how good I wanted my message to be um, and how memorable and inspirational I wanted it to be. Um, and it took a lot of praying to get those thoughts out of my head. In my heart, I knew that it was all about God, but my pride kept getting in the way. And if, if what I have to say today does speak to you somehow, remember it's not my word. Anything of value comes from God. And in reality... If God can use me to do this today, he can use anyone to do anything, and I, I truly believe that, especially now. I've been really nervous about doing this, and, and if I'm honest, the anxiety I've felt has felt like a real burden. Um, but I also know that it's God that's given me this opportunity. He's, he's given me this gift, and I couldn't not do it. It's something I never in my wildest dreams ever thought I'd do. And the only thing that makes sense, the only reasoning, is that he has used the least qualified person so that he gets all the glory. I've had lots of moments over the last few weeks when I've wanted to call Alan and Jackie and pull out of this commitment. I wouldn't have done it, but I, but I have felt like it. But I was reminded of Moses' story, the one where he encountered the Spirit of God in the burning bush. Most of us know that story. Um, God had come to lead his people, the Israelites, out of Egypt and out of slavery. And his plan was to use Moses as his voice. And you could tell that Moses wasn't thrilled or overly confident with his assignment. And he had a few questions for God. Who am I to do this? Who shall I tell them has sent me? But what if they don't believe me? But I'm not a good speaker. And it was this last statement from Moses that I could really relate to. I have never been a good speaker, especially when it comes to public speaking. I've actually had a few disasters. But when I get a bit nervous, I feel that I sometimes I can't form thoughts or, or find the right words. And I don't feel that I've got the ability to put um, something together worth listening to. I don't have that ability, but I know God does. And it was God's reply to Moses in Exodus 4.11 that gave me comfort. The Lord said to him, Who gave human beings their mouths? Who makes them deaf or mute? Who gives them sight or makes them blind? Is it not I, the Lord? Now go. I will help you speak and I will teach you what to say. I just had to rest in this, that God was able to equip me with the ability to do this thing that I felt so unqualified for. It's God that gives us the power to do the things we feel we can't. But I'm not Moses, and God hasn't actually spoken to me, but he has given us his word. So I thought I'd better get a bit serious about reading it. And in preparing for today, I've learned some things. I've become more aware of how important it is to really study God's word. And I know that Al's probably thinking to himself, finally... I've been telling you that for years. And I have listened and I have heard it, but, um, but it, it's not been until recently that I've made that time. 
for the most part, I've left it up to whoever it is that delivers me a message on Sunday morning. Probably like you, I'll always get something from that message. Sometimes I'll feel it was written just for me. Um, but, and and there's, there's been things that have changed me and brought me closer to God, but there's nothing like studying it for yourself. One thing that has really stood out and amazed me is how God always makes his plan work. The way he manipulates or organises places, events, people to be exactly where they need to be at exactly the right time they need to be there so that his can, our plan can be executed perfectly. And this organising can take place decades, centuries before the event is to happen. Jesus was promised to us in Genesis. God knew we'd need a saviour and that plan had been unfolding since the start. And he almost always has to work around us because we've done something to get in his way. But he's patient, time doesn't seem to be an issue and he uses our sin or disobedience to his advantage. And it's in this planning, in the fact that God has complete control where we should find comfort and hope. We've all heard a hundred times before, God has a plan for us. He's had that plan since the beginning of time. But we have to welcome that plan. And to do that, we need to live our lives the way he intended us to. 1 Peter 4, 7 to 11 says, The end of all things is near. Therefore, be alert and of sober mind so that you may pray. Above all, love each other deeply because love covers a multitude of sins. Offer hospitality to one another without grumbling. Oh, thanks so much, I'm so dry. <laughs> That's better. Sorry, I might start that again. 1 Peter 4, 7 to 11 says, The end of all things is near. Therefore, be alert and of sober mind, so that you may pray. Above all, love each other deeply, because love covers a multitude of sins. Offer hospitality to one another without grumbling. Each of you should use whatever gifts you have received to serve others as faithful stewards of God's grace in its various forms. If anyone speaks, they should do so as one who speaks the very word of God. If anyone serves, they should do so with the strength God provides, so that in all things God may be praised through Jesus Christ. To him be the glory and the power forever and ever. Amen. To live our lives as if the end is near, and I don't mean like the doomsday preppers on TV, when we think about the end drawing closer, it reminds us that Christ will come again and that none of us are guaranteed another day. But for us as Christians, that's not a scary thought. Christ could come again any moment. That is a joyful thought because we have been promised a forever better than anything we could ever imagine. And in those verses, Peter is saying, be clear-minded, live with purpose and make good decisions so that we have time to pray, so that we have time to love one another well and to use the gifts that he's given us. And as I was thinking about this, be clear-minded, live with purpose and make good decisions so that we have time. It made me think about all the time I waste um, and I'm not saying we shouldn't have downtime. I think sometimes we do just need to veg out but I think about all the Netflix I watch. And remember when, um, when you used to have to wait a week for, a, for the new show to come on in a series and now you can just watch a, a whole series in one go. Not that I've ever done that, but I've gone close. <laughs> I think we could all spend a bit more time making better choices about what takes up our time. And I'm, I'm on the top of that list. We need to build a world that allows us to spend time with God. When we do these things that Peter speaks about, 
when we make time to do these things, to pray, to love each other well and to use our gifts, God will use us. It only makes sense that he'll use us when we obey him. And you know, he doesn't need to use us. He can make things happen without us. But what a privilege it will be when he does include us in what he has planned. To do these things God wants us to do, to pray. Now, some people, they can just pray so beautifully, but God doesn't mind how you pray. Just have a conversation. Praise him, ask for forgiveness, comfort, guidance. Tell him about concerns you have for yourself, about concerns you have for others. Ask for his help. He wants nothing more than to have a personal relationship with you. And that means getting to know him too. To love each other well. Jesus said to love one another as I have loved you. He loves us completely and without the expectation of anything in return. Be patient to one another, kind, compassionate. And if this seems overwhelming because there's just so many people to love, and the love that Jesus talks about is so deep, just love the person in front of you. Just start there. To use our gifts. You know, the Peter that gives us this advice is the same Peter that denied knowing Jesus three times. God gave Peter grace for that, the same grace that he gives us. And Jesus gave Peter a mission to strengthen the faith of his brothers. I can't help thinking that when we use our gifts for God, the gifts that he's given us, that that's what we do. We strengthen the faith of others and draw them closer to God. Sometimes it's hard to know what your gifts are so if you don't have any real desire or any particular direction, just fill a need. All of these things that Peter says we should do, they do take our time. Sometimes we have to give things up to make time for God. But what we gain is so much greater. And I'm as guilty as the next person in not making time. It wasn't that long ago that I wasn't even making time for church. I've always known there was a God and I knew Jesus died on the cross but I haven't always known why. As a little girl I said my prayers at night and they went something like this. God bless mum, God bless dad and I'd go through the family. We only had a, a small family. My church attendance was off and on, more off than on, especially as a teenager. But I always knew God was there and I would go to him in need, when in need. On the 24th of July, 1994, my brother Jim and his wife, Denise, asked me to a special service they were having at Seacoast. They were having a, a guest speaker. I, I can't tell you who that speaker was, I can't remember, and I can't remember what he spoke about. But at the end of the service, there, there was the offer to go out the front and accept Christ into your life. Well, my heart started beating a little bit quicker, but I remember thinking, mm, I didn't come here for this. But when he asked for the last time, and he said, I know there's someone else out there, it felt like my heart was about to beat out of my chest. And I felt like I was actually being pushed out there. And I realise now that that quickening of my heart was the Holy Spirit urging me to make that commitment. I can't tell you much more about that night. There was a lot of crying, it was mostly me. But the next day I felt so different. And it's hard to explain, but I remember being at work and, and wondering whether people could tell. I felt so different, I wonder whether I, I looked different as well. And I also felt like I could hear what the minister at church was saying more clearly. God's word seemed to be clearer to me. But I gradually stopped going to church again. Other things started taking priority. Life got busy and I forgot about those feelings I had when I was first saved. Well, fast forward 20 something years. I'm married and I have a family. And again, Jim, my brother, I'm so blessed to have a caring brother who knows that having Jesus in your life is everything. 
He told me he was involved in starting a new church in Ganilaba. Why don't you come, he said. We need bottoms on seats. So I went to Arise that first day. And to start with, it wasn't a regular thing. It was a bit off and on. But now, I just need to be here. I love being here. And I, um, yeah, I just want to be here. And just recently, I've actually had to add to my story. A little while ago, I was sitting on the side of my bed praying. I was asking God for direction. I just wanted to know where he wanted me to go with my faith. I prayed this prayer and then I went to bed. And it felt like I was asleep just for a second and I woke up and I had Romans 6.4 on my mind. Not the actual verse. I had no idea what Romans 6.4 said. So I googled it and this is what it said. We were therefore buried with him through baptism into death in order that just as Christ was raised from the dead through the glory of the Father, we too may live a new life. I'm just going to say that again. We were therefore buried with him through baptism into death in order that just as Christ was raised from the dead through the glory of the Father, we too may live a new life. God had put that verse on my mind and I knew after reading it that he wanted me to be baptised. That was where he wanted me to next go with my faith. And I have thought about being baptised before, but to be honest, I didn't really know the significance. I was christened as a baby. I'd, I'd already accepted Christ into my life and I believed that Jesus died and, for our sins and was raised again. But when I read that verse, I realised that when we make that choice to be baptised, it represents us dying as Christ died and our Father God raising us from the dead, just like he did Jesus to walk in a new life. I haven't been baptised yet, but I'm going to be because I know it's part of God's plan. And I'd be thrilled if anyone else has been feeling this way and would like to join me. God just wants us to play a small part in his bigger plan. And to do that, we need to live the way he intended us to. He wants us to make time to pray, to love each other well, and to use our gifts. He wants us to make time for him. Let's pray. I pray for everyone here today. I pray that we can all put those things aside that are keeping us from spending time with you. Please help us see those things that are holding us back from praying, from loving one another well and using the gifts you have given us. Remind us that you need to be our priority and you want to be our priority. And for no other reason than you know it's the best way for us to live. By putting you first, we know that all of those other things we need to do will fall into place. And Lord, thank you for all the things you do for us, the things we see and the things we don't. And as Alan says every week, please give us the opportunity to tell someone that doesn't know you of your goodness. In Jesus' name, amen. <laughs>